And then things get really busy in 300 BC because we're dealing with, uh, with a lot of different cultures. We've got the Persians. Um, you've got King Xerxes. There he is on his horse uh, where he's going to, um, to conquer Greece. And it's reported that he halted along the way with his entire army for three days just to admire a single tree on his way. So I'm thinking, man, they really did cut down the Lebanons. There's like one tree and they just all, oh, there's a tree. Look at the tree. But it was important. Um, also, the, um, when we look at the Greeks and we see um, a student of Aristotle and uh, he was from the town of Lisbo, which would make him a lesbian, I guess, but we're, we're not going to go there. But anyway, he's known as the father of, um, of botany and uh, made the authentic uh, botanical gardens and wrote volumes of books on trees and different plants as far back as a couple thousand years ago. So uh, very meticulous. Also, the Romans at this time coined the term arborator, which has now become arborist for people that take care of trees. So I guess you can say the first time we defined someone as an arborist was a couple thousand years ago. And they also had the groves of academe, um, which may be why Theophrastus got interested in trees, but it was the grove of trees. You know, they didn't hang out in the classroom like we do. Uh, they hung out outside under the trees with Aristotle and Plato and just made you philosophical, I guess, about trees. Made you want to write uh, books about it. All right, so there's kind of a brief Reader's Digest version of kind of how we've changed over time and our, our perceptions of trees and other plants have changed over time. Now we're going to jump to the United States. A long time ago, more than 100 years before we became a country, 1642, Massachusetts enacts a law awarding treble damages to tree owners for damage to fruit trees. So that was a few hundred years ago. Fortunately, they didn't throw uh, George Washington in jail. Because, you know, that kind of would have been a bummer with the founding of the country and, and the new first president. So, so you also see, too, that our first appearance of trees in the United States also involves lawyers, right? So we'll, we'll see more of that and how those laws, tree laws, affect us. Both good and bad. 1646. This is the first public shade tree planting in old Boston town which is now Boston, for the relief of travelers, okay? So this is uh, the Liberty Elm is here, and actually the Liberty Elm is where they hung a couple of British tax collectors, so uh, maybe they liberated their souls from their body or something. Uh, but this is one of our first known um, uh, tree plantings in the, in the uh, U.S., and we still weren't a country yet. 1671. This is, uh, this is our earliest tree planting for an ornamental garden. This is in South Carolina. This place is called Magnolia Plantations and Gardens. It was uh, developed by Thomas Drayden. And this is still in existence today. So this is the, uh, this is the oldest man-made tourist attraction in the U.S. 1682. If we go to uh, 1682, uh, Philadelphia, as you can see uh, in this design, but Philadelphia was designed to have open spaces filled with trees. And so knowing Pennsylvania, you know, William Penn founded Pennsylvania. Kind of interesting if you're not a forestry type, uh, but silva means trees, you know, we have silva culture. And so Pennsylvania is Penn's forest. That's where we get the, he actually just wanted to call it Sylvania but the king asked him to put Penn in front of it because of a debt to uh, William Penn's father, an admiral. He was actually kind of a pretty guy. You usually don't see pretty boys in, you know, the 1600s, but had a good makeup artist. Um, but William Penn advised people to build houses so that you leave enough space for planting trees and orchards and fields around your house. 1807, jump ahead a little bit. 
now that we're a country. Um, a territory of Michigan law required that trees be planted along boulevards and around squares um, so, so that uh, to improve the appearance and other attributes of cities. So again, another law, but lawyers requiring tree planting. As we go through the semester, you'll see more about um, tree ordinances and how we have those for requiring tree plantings and tree preservations. But this is uh, not something new. It's been around for 200 years in this example. 1861, or 1816, I'm sorry. Uh, elms were planted on Boston Commons through funds raised by popular subscription. Okay, so this is our first tree planting fundraiser where they raise funds to plant trees by a nonprofit group. And then again in about 1893, they banned the feeding of cows on the commons in order to protect the trees. So you couldn't let your cows get out there. Eighteen twenty one in uh, Mississippi, they recommend that the new state capital be constructed to have every other block filled with native vegetation or planted trees in an effort to create a healthier environment and to uh, to provide easier fire control and these are a couple of big issues today uh, in urban forestry. so now we have trees being planted for their benefits for different types of benefits than shade and food, which we've seen before. And we start looking at urban forest management on a bigger scale. 1849, um, the uh, Department of Interior is created. And so this is very important. Now it's becoming federal policy of uh, taking care of our natural resources, of which urban forestry is one of them and uh, Thomas Ewing was the uh, first Secretary of the Interior. 1854 is when uh, Henry David Thoreau wrote Walden or Life in the Woods, you know, Walden Pond. Do they still, you still read that in high school? Yeah, sort of. Now you probably, you know, it's it a book about getting away from technology and civilization and that kind of thing. Now we probably read the book like what, on, the, on an iPod or <laughs> on a computer, laptop or something? So it's a little, a little bit of an oxymoron to do that. Uh, but this is important, had a big impact. I remember reading the book in school and thinking, man, I just, I just want to go live out in the woods.